Almighty, we believe in the triune God, Father, Word, and Breath. Three in one. Father, Word, and Holy Spirit. That is the one true God. There is no other God beside Him. And so today I'm going to preach to you about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It, the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Or in French, Eternal Son of God. Eternal Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Jesus Christ is the Word of God. And if Jesus Christ was not from everlasting, as some of the Unitarians claim, then He would not be God. But He is God. He is the eternal Son of God. And you know that, Peter, in your heart. So the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Son of God. You see, you immediately, I, I imagine these people would be Muslims because they're shaking their head when I say Jesus Christ, the Son of God. This is how you And He is declared to be the Son of God with power. You know how we know He's the Son of God? Even the Jewish people know He's the Son of God because in the second Psalm, we're told, kiss the Son, lest He be angry and you perish from the way when his anger is kindled a little bit. Kiss the sun, and that means worship the sun. Jesus Christ never rejected worship. When he was worshipped by the disciples, when he was worshipped after he stilled the, the wind and the waves, they worshipped him, and he never turned away worship. Some of you say, where does Jesus Christ say, I am God, worship me? But where does he not say? Where does he say, I'm not God, don't worship me? Because when he was worshipped, Jesus Christ accepted the worship. Angels, yeah, he would, they he never loved accepted it. worship. He loved to be Angels worshipped. said, why are you worshipping me? Worship God. But Jesus Christ never said, why are you worshiping, worshiping me, worshiping the Father? No, he came as the glory of the Father. He came as the face of God. That's why we read that Jesus Christ is the face of God. We all behold him in a glass. He's no good. The glory of the Lord. We are changed into the same image. Awesome. From glory to glory. Do you read French? Do you speak French? No. Which, which country are you from? Syria. Syria. They speak French in Syria? I don't think they did. Arabic. Arabic, yeah. Well, if, what is the Son of God in Arabic? <laughs> no, I don't believe that because I have Arabic friends who are Christian believers and they say Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So if they say He's the Son of God, there must be words in Arabic for the Son of God. So I ask you, is anybody else speaking Arabic here? I speak Arabic. Anybody else speak Arabic? You speak Arabic? What is the Arabic for the Son of God? I cannot say it. You cannot say I it. Cannot say it. it. Jesus is a messenger. No, and the no, God. no, no, no. Right. no Jesus I cannot, Christ I say is the Son of God. No, no, no. That's why we read in the Gospel here, the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And why is He the Son of God? Because all the attributes of God are in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ had power over evil spirits. Only God has power over evil spirits. Jesus Christ had power to raise the dead. Only God has the power to raise the dead. Jesus Christ had the power to open the eyes of the blind. Only God has the power to open the eyes of the blind. Jesus Christ forgave people's sins. Only God can forgive sin. And so they won't say the Son of God because in their Islamic religion that would be apostasy to do that. But you see, there are many Muslims 
who have come to know Jesus Christ as the Son of God. God from God, as the creed tells us. That's who Jesus Christ is. He came forth from God. I have a Turkish friend who was a Muslim. How did he become a Christian? When he read in the Bible that Jesus Christ said, I came out from God and I'm coming to the world. He said, if he came out from God, he must be God. And he believed and he was saved. And he became a Christian because he believed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And right from the very early church, all the believers, all the apostles, they knew Jesus Christ to be the Son of God. God said he would build his church on that confession of faith. What confession of faith was that? Simon Peter, when Jesus Christ asked him, who do men say that I am? And they said, some say you're one of the prophets. Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're John the Baptist, risen from the dead. But Jesus Christ said, but who do you say that I am? And Simon and the rest of the apostles right. said, He's good, you it? are like the him. Christ, He's the, best. the Son of the living God. And on that confession of faith, the church is built. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Not the Roman Catholic Church. We're not talking about the Roman Church. We're talking about the church which Jesus Christ said he would build and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. Jesus was much more than a prophet. But was he a prophet, yes or no? Jesus Christ said to answer this man's question, he asked, was Jesus Christ a prophet? Well, he's more than a prophet. Because when John the Baptist said, John the Baptist was the last and the greatest of all the prophets, Jesus Christ said that. Yeah. John the Baptist pointed to Jesus Christ and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God, the Korban, the sacrifice of God that takes away the sin of the world. Now we know that only God can forgive sin. And Jesus Christ said to many people, your sin is forgiven you. So A Jesus woman who was caught in adultery, she was going to be stoned to death by all the religious people around her because she'd been caught in adultery. They didn't bring the man, they didn't bring the man with her who was also in adultery. They just brought the woman because they looked down on women. And they wanted to stone that woman to death because she was an adulteress. But Jesus Christ said to all of them, whoever of you has no sin, let him first cast a stone at that woman. And nobody, nobody, but nobody could cast a stone at the adulterous woman. Why? Because they all had sin in their hearts. They all had an adulterous heart. They may not have committed the act of adultery, but they still had an adulterous heart. Because any premeditated thought of lust is adultery. So you don't have to actually do the sin or do the crime to be a sinner. It's because of the nature of sin in your heart. And the Lord Jesus Christ gets to the root of the problem. And he said all of those people who wanted to stone the adulterous woman to death, they all had sin. They all had adulterous hearts. And that's why he said, woman, has no man condemned you? And, and she said, no man, sir. And he said, well, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And so Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ forgave her sins. Only God can forgive sin. You and I have sinned. You and I have come short of the glory of God. You and I, by nature, from our first father, Adam, are all sinners. We're sinful by nature. And that's why we all deserve death. Because the wages of sin is death. The wages as payment 
for sin. Every sin that people commit is punishable by death. And our first father, Adam, disobeyed God. Atheism, unbelief, not believing what God had said. That was the root cause of all the other sins in the world, so all the other sins in the human race, all the disasters that has ever taken place in this world are due to unbelief. The root cause of all sin is Adam's unbelief. And in Adam, we are all sinful. In Adam, we are all dead in sin. Only in Jesus Christ can you be raised up from the dead. Because Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. That's what he came into the world to do. Had he never tasted death, then Jesus Christ could not give us life eternal. But he tasted death for every man. And then he rose again from the dead. And he ascended up into heaven in that humanity in which he had lived. And he's taken that humanity Sir, to the right hand of God. I asked you if Jesus was a prophet, you said more than that. No, and then in Matthew 13, 57, and so they rejected him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is respected everywhere except his own town and by his own family. Jesus himself referred to himself as a prophet. He also referred to himself as the Son of God. Where? He said, all that the Father does, the Son does likewise. He said, the Son does nothing of himself, I'll ask but you what he sees again. the Father do. Is Jesus because the whatever prophet? things God the Father does, God the Son does likewise. Sir. Just as the Father raises up the dead and quickens them, so the Son of God quickens or makes alive David whom he will because Jesus Christ is the Lord both in, of the in living in and book, of the dead and book, the reason why he in came book, into David this world was, also was to save sinners of God. and book, God alone can save sinners in the Psalms, God alone is the saviour of, of the world God alone that's why Jonah said salvation is from the Lord yes, and Jesus Christ came from above and Jesus he said Jesus himself God. said to the Jewish high priest and the religious people he said you are from below I am from above you are of this world I am not of this world and the kingdom that Jesus Christ came to establish is a kingdom that rules in our hearts and it's a kingdom of love it's a kingdom of grace it's a kingdom of glory Jesus Christ sets up his everlasting kingdom in the hearts of men. As Solomon said, the Most High God does not dwell in temples made with human hands. His hand made all these things. But in Jesus Christ, we see the dwelling place of God. Jesus Christ himself said that he was going to send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is like the mother who makes a home for the Father and the Son. And so, in the Holy Spirit, we have our dwelling place in Jesus Christ, in God the Father. Our dwelling place is not in a building, it's not a mosque. In London, it won't make God any more God because Jesus Christ came to dwell in the hearts of people. He came to dwell in fleshy tables of the heart. Christ came to live in people. And that's where we see the perfection of God in the person of Jesus Christ. That's where we see all the perfections, all the attributes of this holy God. Apart from Jesus Christ, you cannot know this God. Only in Jesus Christ can you know God personally. Only in Jesus Christ we are brought the knowledge of God. We are brought into a relationship with God as our Heavenly Father. And though God is so high and so holy, He was willing to come to this world in the person of His beloved Son. Because in Jesus Christ we see all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. 
and we are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. So in Jesus Christ, we have eternal life. This is the true God and eternal life because Jesus Christ came from eternity. He's not just a, a man, the son of Mary, that you and I are children of human parents. God the Father is the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not Joseph, not Joseph. God the Father is the Father of Jesus Christ, the eternal Father. The eternal Father who has an eternal Son and who has an eternal Spirit. Those of you who know your Quran, you'll know that Jesus Christ is the Word of God. That's what he's spoken of in the Quran. He's the Word of God. He's the Spirit of God. In Jesus Christ, we, have, we see all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You will not find God anywhere else in any religious leader or any prophet or any religious leader. No, no mullah. No, he doesn't house God. Only Jesus Christ houses God in his humanity. That's where we see the very building of God, the very temple. That's why Jesus Christ said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it again. He was speaking of the temple of his body. And the temple that the Christian has today is what the people have. It's not, the, it's not the Pope of Rome meeting in the Vatican. That's not the church. The church is Jesus Christ. He is the temple. And we are built up an holy temple in the Lord. We are living stones that are built up into this glorious and heavenly and eternal temple. And it's a never-ending temple. You see, if they build the temple on the, on the mount in Jerusalem, it doesn't make any difference. They can build the temple, they can bring back animal sacrifices, it will not take away your sin. Only the blood of Jesus Christ takes away sin. Only the blood that Jesus Christ shed on the cross can give you the assurance that your sin is covered. Nothing but the blood. And so that is why we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. And my friends, there is no curse in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Him. And we are complete in Him. And just as, Je just as God has the power over the weather, man is not in control of the climate. Man cannot control the climate. And so there's no climate change. Man Jesus is does alive. not it's control of the climate. Jesus, God, is God controls God is alive. the climate. And when Jesus Christ said to the wind and the waves, be still, they obeyed him. They obeyed him. Only the wind and the waves obey God. And that's why Jesus Christ is God. Because the wind and the waves obeyed him. The wind and the waves obeyed him. The evil spirits obeyed him. Death obeyed him. When Jesus Christ said to Lazarus, come forth, Lazarus came out of the tomb because death must submit to Jesus Christ who is the way and the truth and the life. And in order to see God, you must see Jesus Christ by faith. You must see that he is the eternal word of God, the eternal life that God gives is Jesus Christ. And there is no life apart from him. We have eternal life through the eternal word of God. That is Jesus Christ, the Kalimat Allah. We have eternal life through the eternal word and through the eternal spirit, the breath of God. That's how we have eternal life. And the Mohammedans need to hear this message. We have eternal life through the eternal Father, the eternal Word, and the eternal Spirit of God, the eternal breath 
of God. And unless you have that eternal life, you are dead in your sins. And if you die in your sins, you'll go to hell in your sins. And there's no repentance in the grave where you are going. Once to die, and after death, the judgment. All you have to do is acknowledge your transgression. Acknowledge that you have sinned against this holy God. Come before God with a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Acknowledge that you have offended God. And acknowledge that you need the Savior. And if you come before God humbly like that, He will not turn you away. He turns away the proud. He turns away the hypocrite. He turns away those who are righteous in their own eyes and despise others. But he accepts sinners. Sinners, Jesus will receive. Sound this word of grace to all. Whom the heavenly halfway lead, all who linger, all who fall, Christ receives sinful men, not so that they may remain in their sinfulness, but that they might be changed. And that's why there is no salvation without repentance. Repentance is a change of mind towards God. There is no salvation without it. But it's not only repentance. Your repentance will not earn you a place in heaven because it's the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for the forgiveness of sin. That alone can put away your sin and my sin. Jesus Christ was willing to die in the place of sinners. He was willing to be made in all points like we are, yet without sin. In Adam, our first father, we are all sin. In Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the eternal Word of God, the last Adam, we are brought to life everlasting. We have eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and we shall never perish. Amen. Let's go. 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 Let's go.